The DW291 was first released in 2019, but it may have escaped some people's awareness. This was because at the time its predecessor, the DW290, was still a strong seller, and Casio didn't promote it heavily through the usual channels such as Instagram or Twitter. Sorry, X. So let's take a look at the DW291 today to see whether it's a worthy successor to the DW290. This is a large watch and with a width of almost 47mm, it's coming towards the upper end of a watch size that I would find acceptable on my 16cm wrists. The variant that I have here is the 1BVCF. And with a gunmetal coloured bezel with four metal screws and a red pattern border around the display, it does look modern and sporty. Although the concertina barrel shape around the four button gives it a vintage sci-fi aesthetic and makes it look a bit like the robot from Lost in Space. And if you don't like this red variant, other colourways are also available. For around 30 US dollars, you do get a lot of watch for your money, in terms of both features and build quality, and the inevitable comparison to G-Shock is going to arise. Water resistance is rated at 200 meters like G-Shock watches, and the crystal used is mineral glass, which is a welcome upgrade. The strap used is like those found on G-Shocks. It is wide at around 20 millimeters in width, and there are bumpers covering the 18 millimeter spring bars. This keeps the strap curved and offers a level of shock absorption if the watch is dropped. If we take a look at its features now and compare it to its predecessor, the DW290, there's a bit of a mixed bag because the DW291 is better in some areas but worse in others. The DW290 is well known for being featured on the wrist of Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible and the case is an unusual trapezoidal shape. The turquoise coloured text on the case also helps to give it a 1990s charm. The DW291 on the other hand has more of a conventional square shape, but in either case, the material used is resin. Inside the case, the DW291 uses a 3484 module, and battery life has been improved to 10 years from the 2 years of the 3231 module found inside the DW290. Both watches come with a stopwatch and countdown timer that can count up to or down from 24 hours. However, the auto repeat function for the countdown timer that was present on the DW290 is missing on the DW291. For the alarm, the DW291 comes with 5 alarms, whereas the DW290 makes do with only one. Finally, let's take a look at the backlight and the DW291 uses two amber coloured LEDs which do a sufficient job. In my opinion though, the backlight on the DW290 was better as it uses electroluminescent technology that would light up the whole screen a beautiful blue colour. The DW290 also has a flash alert function where the whole screen would light up when either the alarm, countdown timer or hourly signal would activate. In recent years though, Casio has been phasing out EL backlights so I would not be surprised if they either phase out the production of the DW290 or at least update the module to use an LED backlight. LED backlights use less power than EL backlights and also cost less to produce. Click on the link above if you want to know more about watch backlights. One feature of the DW291 that I haven't so far mentioned is the well time function. Casio is famous, or should I say infamous, for writing text on a case boasting about the watch's features. And yet there is not a single line of text saying well time because this watch has 31 time zones pre-programmed into the module. It inherits its feature from the AE1200, but not only that, it has exactly the same features as the AE1200 and the two watches share the same firmware. So even though the DW291 is in the same product line as the DW290, it would be more appropriate to consider the watch as a beefed up AE1200 world time. Even though it is physically larger than the AE1200, one critique that I would have is that it doesn't make the best use of the area reserved for the display. 
There is a digital analog clock in the corner, but it is smaller than the one on the AE1200, making it tricky to read from a natural distance. Also, the hands are so thin that they get covered by the crosshairs at certain times of the day. The only concession to visual eye candy on the DW291 is the line graph counting the seconds, whereas the AE1200 has the world map. Overall, my opinion of the DW291 is that it is a good watch if you consider it in its own right. You get a robust watch with a lot of features at a decent price point. Whether it's a worthy successor to the DW290 Mission Impossible, well that's debatable, because that watch has a charm that's of its time which cannot be replicated. And as I don't already own that watch, that's what I'm going to get next. That's it for now folks, I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time.